Welcome to our channel. I'm Angie. And I'm Whitney. And we're the Simple Teachers. And today we're going to show you how to use our digital phonics lessons. I'm excited for those. They're, they're a good product. Yeah, they'll be awesome. So Whitney's going to walk you through how to use them. If you have not downloaded our free sample of our digital phonics lessons, I would go ahead and pause the video and do that now, or go ahead and download it after you watch this video. But when you download the free sample, we'll include in it one lesson from our CVC Short A download. So I'll go ahead and describe what's in our digital phonics lessons. Page two will go over the license information. We just ask that you remember that the download is legally for one teacher's use only. So if you want to share this, go buy multiple licenses or just send people to our store. Page three will describe how to use our digital phonics lessons. So step one is to watch this video. The link is in the PDF. Step two are to print the lesson cards. Here's an example of the lesson card when printed. You could fold it in half or cut it. Step three is to print the student text in this PDF. So here's the student text. We have them two to a page. You can slice them in half. And then step four is to print the dictation page in this PDF. Here's the dictation page. You can cut them in force. Or if you don't want to use that dictation page, another great idea is to just train your students to how to use whiteboards. And then step five is important if you want to use the digital aspect of this is to click the link within this PDF to get access to the digital lesson. And what's cool is if technology goes down and you don't have access to the digital lessons for whatever reason, you can still teach these lessons because you have the lessons, you have the lesson cards, you have everything you need to still teach the phonics lesson. Page four of this download goes over the scope and sequence. So if you were to have purchased all of a pattern, like short A, for example, you would see five lessons in this scope and sequence, but where this is just the free sample, we've listed one, the one that we're giving you access to. So this yellow box is important because this is where the links are to the actual digital lesson. I'll click that in a second. Down below, this pink box is also very informative for you because it will give you a link to our scope and sequence for all of our digital phonics lessons. I'll go ahead and click that now, and it'll open up to a Google Sheet. In this Google Sheet, you'll see everything we've written and made lessons for digitally for short A, short E, and you can keep going through. We have five lessons in each short vowels, and then we also have five for mixed short vowels with CVCs, and then we've written 10 for blends with short vowels. So that's pretty awesome. Going back to the PDF, let's jump to page five. This is where you'll print your phonics lesson. We highly recommend you printing the teacher card even if you're using the digital lesson where all the thinking for teacher is done for you, we still highly recommend you print this lesson card because you need to know what's coming next. You'll want to make teacher decisions throughout the lesson. So print the lesson card and have them filed away. Then page six shows the student text. So even though the student text will be shown on the digital lesson, having the students have the text in their hand, we feel is very critical. Letting them be highly engaged with the text in their hand and it's also displayed in the digital lesson. Page seven is the optional dictation page. At the end of the lesson, they'll be writing words with whatever focus the lesson had and so this is just an option like I mentioned earlier you're welcome to just use whiteboards however you want to train your students so I'm going to jump back up to page four page four is that important page because it'll contain the links to the actual digital lesson so right here in this freebie we've included one lesson the title of the text is the man and cat and it is a short ACVC lesson so I'm going to go ahead and click that title 
Okay, so it'll pull up a Google slide. If you've never used Google slide, we highly recommend you playing around with this before you actually teach it. So there's a couple things you'll need to know that I'll go through, so make sure you watch this part. So Google Slides are basically like a PowerPoint, but Google online. And so this is a view only link for you. You won't be able to print or share this due to licensing issues. So page two again goes over our licensing information. Page three goes over how to use these, which I've already said. Page four is important for the digital lessons. So our Google Slides portion of the download. So here's some tips. Tip number one, present mode will enable the transition. So here's present mode up here. It's present with the little box with a triangle as if it's a play button. So I'm going to press present to just show you. So present mode enables transitions. In this lesson, there's going to be transitions. If you're not in this mode, you won't be able to see them. So make sure you hit present mode. The next tip, if you're using a device, say a phone or some type of tablet, an iPad or something, you'll need to download the Google Slides app. It won't work as well without the app. So make sure you just have the Google Slides app downloaded. The next tip is you may prefer to use a clicker to easily advance transitions and slides without having to use a mouse. So let's say you're teaching this in front of a whole group setting. You don't want to be stuck to your mouse. So by having a clicker, you can advance the transition or the slide wherever you're at. So you're available for management. You're there right close to your students. You're not stuck to your mouse. My classroom has a type of smart board where I have a pen and I can click on my actual board. And so that makes it nice for me. So I just use my pen that comes with my smart board setup. The next tip is to get the lesson cards and the student text in the PDF printed out ahead of time. If you have those printed out, they will go along with the digital lesson very well. So the lesson cards would be for you and then the student text will be for the students to read when you get to that portion of the lesson. And then of course, the last tip, don't forget to watch our video. So I'm going to back out of this present mode. There's a couple ways to do it. I can drag my mouse down and this gray box appears. I can press exit or I can just press my escape key on my keyboard. So I'll go ahead and just press exit. I'm going to jump to page five in this Google slide, our digital link. This will give you the scope and sequence. So this is the actual scope and sequence for our CVC short A download. So all of these will be in there for short A, the five text and lessons, if you were to go download all of short A. But where this is just the freebie, the man and cat is provided. All right, page six begins the official lesson. So remember, you won't see the animations or transitions until I get in present mode. So I'm going to hit this present button. Remember, it's the box with the triangle, like a play button. I'm going to click that and then I will be able to show you the animations. Step one in a, of an effective phonics lesson would be phonemic awareness warm up. We have to warm up that sound center of the brain and then later we'll connect it to the actual spellings. So this is a critical part of why we have this step as step one because of brain research. So sound practice, we warm up the sound center in our students' brains. So for each Download, so all of our short A lessons stay the same phonemic awareness warm-up to help you guys with procedures. So there's no need to teach a different one every day. Let's stick to the same one, same procedure. So for all of our short A CVCs, we've chosen phoneme isolation. We've also included teacher talk. So here would be an example of how to teach during this part. Listen to the word, and the words are just right here in the corner if you don't know what that picture is. So we've written them really small for, just for the teacher. Listen to the word nap. What's the word? Students would say nap. What's the first sound in nap? Students would say n. What's the last sound in nap? Students would say p. What's the middle sound in nap? Students would say a. 
So when the students are doing the work, we just smile and watch and give corrective feedback when needed. When I click, it advances that transition to the next picture. So if you, if you don't know what that is, remember the words are really little in this bottom corner. So this is the word sat. I will model this one as well. Listen to this word sat. What's the word? Students would say sat. What's the first sound in sat? What's the last sound in sat? T. What's the middle sound in sat? Ah. Good, so what's important here is make sure teachers asking the questions, students are doing the work. You can, it's very valuable for assessment. If you're doing it, you don't know how the students are doing because you're giving them the answers. So let them do the work, smile and give feedback. Okay, I'm going to keep clicking through to get through all the words we've provided for phonemic awareness. The second step is letter sounds. So now we're taking those sounds we just worked with in phonemic awareness, and we are converting them to the actual spellings, the letter sounds. So if you're to this point in phonics in kindergarten, most likely you've already introduced and taught these sounds. So we're treating this as if it's a review, but if you need to explicitly teach these, teach them. But we're treating it as if it's a review and that they've already seen and know these letters and their sounds. So if that's the case, you would point and tap and say sound. Remember, students say the sounds. The teacher is only pointing and giving the signal. The teacher is smiling, modeling when needed, and giving corrective feedback when needed. But the teacher is not saying the sound. The students are. So I'll model just a little bit. Sound. Students would say ah. Sound. Students would say m. Mm. Sound. N. Mm. Sound, er, sound, k, sound, p. So you go through that. You can be creative and mix it up. Um, again, be flexible. If there's things you have not taught, teach it. Don't treat it as a review. So teach it. So that's step two. So we've warmed up their sound center of their brain, and then we've warmed up their the written, the actual spelling, the letter portion. So by activating those two together, it is a critical part of a phonics lesson. Step three is now taking the sounds and spellings and making actual words. So teaching them how to read words. So word blending is what we've provided for you. So I'll go ahead and just model. It'll show the whole word, but I'll show you how that's done. So I would say or give a signal, sound, m, mm, sound, ah, sound, Whoops, sorry. Blend, ma, sound, n, blend, man, word, man. So each time I, each time another transition or animation appeared was because I clicked my mouse. So I'll do that again so you can see. When I click the mouse again, it'll pull up the first sound in the next word. Sound, s, sound, a. Ah. Blend, sa, sound, d, blend, sad, word, sad. So I'm clicking my mouse to see those transitions or animations appear. Now remember, I was being teacher and student. The teacher would just give the signal. I get to where my students know just when I point. I don't even have to say sound anymore or word anymore or blend anymore. Um, they just know my finger is the signal, but I still throw it in too. So tapping, swooping, swiping <laughs> is also the signal. So we put in about five words per lesson. So if there's words that we didn't include, go ahead and use that lesson card and do the same thing on your whiteboard right there. So we've again included about five for each. So when you're done with word blending, then you will see step four. Step four will go over sight words from the text. So all of the words in word blending, all of the words in sight words are from the decodable text they will be reading near the end of the lesson. So for sight words, we're, we love the procedure say, spell, say. So we're going to tell the student the word. This is the word the. 
and then I ask the students, what's the word? They will say the. Then the students say spell say. So they said the word the. Spell the. T-H-E. What's the word? The. So I'll show you again. I'll be teacher student. This is the word they. What's the word? They. Spell they. T-H-E-Y. What's the word? They. So that is just a simple, effective way of teaching students sight words. Say, spell, say. And same thing, remember, teachers giving signals, initially telling them the word, but the students are doing the work of saying, spelling, and saying. And these sight words are words that either are irregular, they do not follow sound spelling rules, or they're patterns that we have not yet taught in our scope and sequence. Step five to an effective phonics lesson is getting sounds and spellings into actual text. We have to get them reading fluently. So we don't just isolate, we connect everything into text. And that's why decodable text is very critical. So we're going to tell our students, now we get to read short A words in text. And those sight words we'll also see in text as well. And so this title is called The Man and Cat. So we have an example of teacher talk down below that you can use with your students. Here's an example. You could say, students, whisper, read. I'll be listening for accurate reading. Then we'll choral read together. And then just remember, we find ways to reread, reread, reread. I love throwing these into centers, into buddy reads. If I have parent helpers, if I have any helpers from the school or anything, I find ways to reread. The more exposure we can get them to the spelling patterns we're teaching, to get them into text to read fluently, the better. The more fluent readers they'll be, the more accurate readers they'll be. So reading decodable text is critical. So I'll quickly model how this might look like. We want them to do the reading first. I'm not going to model this first. I want them to apply what we just learned. Now, to initially teach the procedure, yes, I will model that. But I'm assuming that I've already taught the procedure. My students are now going to whisper read. I may give them a stopping point. I may not. So I'm going to say, students, I want you to read all the way until the second line. And I might draw right on my whiteboard, but they have this text because remember you printed it, <laughs> you printed it, you cut it in half and they have this text in their hand. You can even draw lines on this if you want stopping points, whatever you prefer. So students would whisper read, the man and cat, the man ran, the cat ran, the man and cat ran. And as the teacher, I would be going around monitoring, giving, um, praise feedback, corrective feedback, right? And then I say stop, and then I bring, that's my signal for class to stop and have my attention, and then we begin choral reading together. So I would be the lead reader, I'm pulling them along, and they are reading. I love to say finger on the first word. I need to make sure they're reading the text and not just copying what I'm saying. So have a procedure where you know they're actually reading the text. So I would say something like this, ready, begin. The man and cat, the man ran, the cat ran, and everyone would be chorally reading together. So by then we've already got two reads. Early finishers would, I never say you're done and you just sit there. If you're done early, you reread. So some students may have three reads, that's awesome. So you would do that for the whole text and then I find ways to plug it in somewhere else during my day. It's not anything addition, it's just things we're already doing. Maybe it's an early finisher task, maybe it's a center job, maybe it's spell work when they first come in. I don't know, there's lots of ways to find ways to reread. Step six is dictation. So we're going to write short A words now. So you can print out the dictation page if you would like, or you can just train your students to use whiteboards. That's probably what I, what I would do, it's less prep on me, and it saves paper. So, an example of teacher talk we have at the bottom could be something like this. Listen to the word, and we have real little on the bottom just for the teacher, the first, second, and third word. Listen to the word ran. What's the word? And I let my students say ran. I want them to say it and really hear those sounds. Ran. Please write ran. As you write the word, 
spell it in a quiet voice, and read it to yourself. So here's a quick procedure we like to say. Say, spell as you write, read. So they said the word, they're spelling the word as they write, and they read. And then have a procedure what they do when they're done. And when you click your mouse, it will reveal the word and you can check as a class. So you could go through each word that we provided. All right, then the very last page just gives a closure for your lesson. Great work, you worked hard at reading and writing short A. So that's it. I hope this sample was a good help. I do want to show you, let's say you accidentally click and you're like, ah, I went too far. So say you accidentally clicked and you needed a backup at any part of the transitions. Pull your mouse down and it will bring up this gray box. This back and forward arrows will come up showing previous and next. Those will back up the transition or the slide, depending if there's transitions on that page. So no fear, you can always back up and fix your mistake, or you can just click exit and get back to the slide that you want. So if I need to back up to the step one of the lesson, I can do it that way and then go back to present. If I accidentally click, oops, whoops, I wanna go back, just click the back arrow. So that's another tip. So other than that, I think that's it. So thank you for downloading this free sample of our beginner phonics lessons. One more time, I just want to reiterate this page four in the PDF, what you download is critical because that's the only way you'll get the link to the actual digital lesson. So now that you've seen Whitney walk you through the digital download and what to do, we just wanna remind you that these lessons should be done quick paced. Yeah. So you don't wanna take, in kindergarten, you wanna be fast. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't keep the kids at the rug, even 12 minutes is a long time. So make sure that you have a good procedure ready to go, maybe even break it up in parts at the beginning. Um, through the school year, you're gonna teach those pieces, parts yeah. and pieces, I guess is the way to say it. Yep, so your phonemic awareness, step one and a piece. Yeah. And then your step two, the letter sound, step three, the word blending. Break those up, mm -hmm. especially for kindergarten. What's oh, their yeah. stamina at the oh, rug? yeah, not very Three long. minutes, maybe? Five. It's <laughs> Three usually, to five? It's usually their age, plus or minus two minutes. Minus two. So yep. if they're six years old, five, six years old. You get four to eight minutes. There we go. <laughs> yeah, so Keep that in mind. And have a good procedure. Whitney mentioned that a few times. And procedures, oh, they're the key to everything going well. Mm -hmm. So if things aren't going well, chances are it's your procedure. Mm -hmm. So double check those and smooth them out. Make sure that everything's going well. And then, especially in kindergarten, get those lessons so you especially get to the text practice. Yeah. Kids need a chance to apply their decoding skills to text. And then after it's all running smoothly, they'll, they'll go rather quickly. I think for even kindergarten teachers, I've seen it happen a lot, so yeah. I know they will. And then first grade, you just start off right away teaching your procedures and you should be able to do these lessons quite easily. Okay. 12 minutes um, isn't uh, too long. Well, because you're changing mm -hmm. focus throughout. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. not like you're stuck in phonemic phen awareness for right. 12 minutes. Right. You are right. moving quickly. And so in second grade lessons like this, it is not too long for them at all. Yeah, So once we have some kids to wrangle up, we'll get some some videos yeah, of that. with so. some kids, that would be awesome. <laughs> all right, well, thanks so much. Hope this is helpful, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks. Simply, Simply teach. teach.